Hello everyone, welcome to Open Source Spotlight. We invite open source authors and ask them to show the tools they're working on. And today we have Johannes. Um, hi Johannes, tell us a few words about yourself and about the tool you want to show us. Hi Alexei, thanks for having me again. It's, it's a pleasure. Um, I'm Johannes, I'm one of the co-founders of Kern AI and we mainly build an open source project, which is our flagship project, Refinery. I already introduced it like half a year ago, um, which is a yeah, quite powerful tool to build training data. But today I want to show the next open source project that we released, I think three or four weeks ago. So also quite, quite early and it's called Bricks. And the idea of Bricks is to have like just a collection. So currently it's about 50 uh, open source modules, like not models, but modules, Python snippets that you could use for natural language processing. So for instance, enrichments, extractions, and so on, really with the idea, just if you have an idea that you can get a baseline implementation super fast, that's the idea of Bricks. <laughs> yeah, sounds exciting. Cool. Um, let me share my screen. Maybe I can uh, tell you a little bit about it and show some examples for it. Um, I hope it works. You can see yes. my screen, like, right? See your screen, yes. Cool. So that's basically the idea. So Bricks is this um, library. It's not basically a Python library. So you don't really pip install something, but you can think more of it like as a collection, like a book library or like a knowledge center kind of. And we just thought to ourselves, where we very often have texts, like just some reviews or emails or something like that. And we wanted to apply like standardized functions to the uh, modules every now and then uh, to the text. And we thought about two, uh, sorry, three different categories for that, where we typically apply modules, which is we want to classify things like text, for instance, the sentiment or the subjectivity. We want to extract data from our texts, like for instance, URL, hashtags, and so on. And uh, every now and then we also want to generate texts on um, existing texts. So that's basically what Works is all about, dividing open source modules into those three categories and providing them here. Um, and just to give you some example, what this could look like, um, it's the classifiers page, which is, for instance, containing an emotionality detection or the reading time, the sentence complexity. So different kind of domains. But what I can now do very easily is just look into them. And I have ready-made source code available that is basically just showing how you can integrate the existing library. For instance, here we use um, Lexmo and the NLTK um, library. And we have over here at the right hand side, a little playground and it's a little bit unstable. I have to say every now and then our endpoints are crashing. So I hope it's working now, um, but you can basically just fetch data. Okay, it worked, <laughs> now I'm happy. <laughs> and you can see for instance over here that for this text, it gets the emotion fear. So it's basically very simple to just play around a little bit, look into for instance, the emotionally, uh, emotionality detection, the reading time, it can be really simple, right? So for instance, the reading time just uses the text that library um, and calculates. Typically you need 15 milliseconds per character to read. So if you see this text, for instance, and you calculate the reading time, you get something like 0.65 um, um, seconds that you need to read this text. So the thing about Bricks mainly is how can we provide standardized code snippets that always have like the same signature? Um, so basically all of them will just tag as input a record, which is a dictionary where you have, for instance, your texts or your um, languages that you want to translate between and just showing how the code for this could look like. And yeah, this is for classifiers, right? So basically just enriching one label like one string, for instance. We also have extractors, 
which is mainly using regular expressions. <laughs> and I hate coming up with regular expressions. So I already love that section for my own work. So for instance, if I will have like texts containing uh, EBANs, um, this would be the regular expression to collect that. And if we have our text over here, uh, we use the spacey tokenizer for that. Um, we can just run it and see that the first token is an IBAN. Um, right, so this is just one example. Again, there are different ones, um, file paths, prices, keywords, so a couple of them. Um, and last but not least, and this is like super, super new. We did this like last week or something like this. We have first generators. So they just take as input existing text and generate new one. So very simple example, uh, example is cleansing HTML tags. So if you scrape, for instance, using uh, requests um, and then you want to uh, find a text from your uh, HTML, you can apply beautiful soup. And then here you can see, for instance, um, if you have the uncleansed text, you can now uh, run it through beautiful soup and you get the cleansed text. Um, and again, just the idea, how can we come up with a couple of them? I think some of them are quite funny. Um, so for instance, one of uh, our engineers implemented a small talk uh, truncation because we've seen in our work, for instance, if you have emails uh, that people send and you want to analyze them, that oftentimes they have some small talk that is irrelevant for the machine learning model. So this one, for instance, uses some stop word logic to calculate what is small talk and cuts it out of the text, um, right? So some of them are quite funny, I think. <laughs> you can look into them. But um, yeah, that's the, the, the basic idea of bricks. So how can we come up with a relatively simple standardized interface like signatures? And we just want to provide the code samples for this so that if you have an idea, um, you can just go to big the bricks and say, for instance, subjectivity. Uh, the search is not working uh, that good yet. <laughs> um, and just say, okay, this would be my brick for it. Let me look into it. And I have already some sample implementation. It's, so really, really simple, cool. but that's the idea. <laughs> and what happens when I click, uh, so I see that uh, in the corner, in the top uh, right corner, there's this, you got an idea for a new brick. Exactly. What happens when I click on issue? Exactly. So this is really something super, super simple. Um, it's just a list of things that we want to implement. Um, and where both we as Kern AI are going to implement those modules, but we also uh, encourage people from the community, like whoever wants to do something to implement a module. So for instance, let's say I want to build a URL parser, which is also a good first issue. So for instance, the following URL, um, you could either just come up with an issue, you could think of, okay, this would be interesting. So I'll add it as an issue, just the text, what you would think would be useful, a useful addition to bricks. Or you can also say, well, I want to implement that because this looks interesting to me. I want a little challenge. Um, and then we have over here in the uh, read me a contributing file. It's super um, in detail. So typically you don't even have to go that much into detail, but it's just for people that want to be super, super sure about how they can contribute. Um, so for us, really, if you have any contribution, you're already super happy. <laughs> um, but this explains basically how you can uh, implement the modules, which is basically um, just like the code snippet that you've seen in the website and then you have a little fast API endpoint under the hood so that you can use the playground. That's typically how we can make contributions. That's pretty cool. So it's possible to just create an issue and then stop on this and uh, wait till you implement this or somebody else implements this or it's possible to just go ahead and implement uh, it ourselves, right? It's both possible, right? So. Um, we have the goal to, um, yeah, create. So we work in two week sprints at Kern. We typically have the goal to implement two to three bricks per sprint. So we will hope that this is 
gonna grow uh, more and more. Um, but yeah, if you have an idea, basically two two formats, either just creating an issue, just like a feature request ish list. And if we see that it's interesting and people like it, we'll just start on it. Um, if the person submitting the issue is not wanting to do this themselves. Um, so a relatively simple format, just we have our assignees. So for instance, this is one that Leo is going to work on next. Um, and if the person creating the issue just assigns themselves, well, then we are already seeing that they want to implement it themselves. So that's typically how, or how we want to structure it from the moment. So what kind of code do you have there? I just the web interface well, that you just demoed, right? So this is uh, what you keep in uh, your GitHub repo. So um, you mean the the, the like code? If you go to Bricks uh, repo, yeah. Then like all this code is uh, the web interface uh, that we saw, or is just uh, some folders here? Those are the endpoints. We have the web interface in um, another repository. We currently have it private, but we are going to open source it as well uh, soon, I guess. Um, but this is so we had it. Wanted to make it a bit more modular. This is really just the endpoints. Um, so let's just take one example. Let's look, for instance, into the uh, emotionality detection. And typically, one module consists of four files. One being the readme. The readme is exactly what you can see over here. So let's just go to the emotionality detection. So we have the same opened in the web interface and in the repository. Um, so this is the readme MD that we display over here. Then we have the init, which is basically the um, playground, so to say. So like the fast API endpoint, some example. Um, text and then we have the code snippet which is another markdown which is just what we display here in this little monaco editor and then last but not least to um, basically synchronize the Brix repository web with the web interface we have a little config file which is basically just for for maintenance so that we have everything up and running um, this is, might be something we have to work a bit more on in the future because our endpoints sometimes are still, still um, um, crushing, but um, I think we'll, we'll figure that out. But for instance, what you can also see here is that this brick, the emo uh, emotionality detection, has an issue ID linked to it, which is basically what you see over here. So this is like the button showing the issue with which it was created. And this is basically just the uh, issue 17, uh, 97, where you can see exactly the process. So this one of our team members said what he wanted to implement. He said the Lexmo package could be interesting. This could be a first idea. I'm going to work on it. And so for instance, if someone uses this package and realizes that there could be an improvement for it, or it could be made even more stable, or more performant, they can also just go over to the GitHub page, look into it, and make a suggestion. So very simple format. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. And how many people are already working on this? So I guess that's your entire current AI team. Like you said, you want to contribute three bricks every sprint, right? Exactly. So this is our hope at the moment. It's the current team, so from the current team, we are nine people in total. From the current team, it's yeah, three people working on bricks. Um, not full time, but uh, as an active part of the development. And I believe that we will have to provide more and more modules ourselves so that the library bricks becomes more interesting. So we just said, okay, we will implement the first 50 to 100 completely on our own most likely but we hope that at some point people will find the repository and think that it's interesting and come up with new ideas and that's that's a bet that we are making um we just hope that it might be interesting for the community but the goal is that maybe there's like a half half ratio so maybe every every 
two weeks, one from the community and one from the, the current team could be interesting. Mm -hmm. And to, what are your plans? Do you want to include more sections or now mostly you just want to keep populating the existing ones? Um, so basically we will add a fourth uh, category, which is basically we want to, um, at the moment, the, the classifiers are not completely um, divided correctly. So we have, for instance, um, the reading time module, which is at the moment producing a float, right? So the time. <laughs> um, and we have classifiers that produce strings. We want to separate that. So you will see a fourth um, section soon. And the reason we do this is because, um, and now it gets extra interesting for the team kern, Bricks is directly integrated with our other open source project refinery. Um, so let me very quickly just show it. I already showed it last time in the, the last open source spotlight. But what you can do in Refinery is you can automate lots of your, your labeling and quality assurance, and you can use bricks for that. Right? So for instance, um, if you remember from the last time, we have so some, some sample data set, like for instance, just clickbait messages. And uh, I have them in English, and I now think, OK, could I compute the sentence complexity and maybe the language? and the emotionality, well, all of that works, right? So for instance, um, I could go into the settings, calculate a new attribute to go from my original English text to German text, and I can just search in bricks, right? This is refinery, it's integrated, and I can now say translate, and say I want to translate the headline from English to German, and I get the brick code directly integrated in refinery, right? So I could now, I would just run it on 10 because it takes a little bit of time uh, because it's calling an API. Um, but this is how, how we see bricks and refinery work together quite well. And we want to look into more things how we can make this even more interesting. So one step for bricks will also be um, something like, I'm not even sure what kind of bricks could be interesting for me. Let me just use my data set. I will push it uh, to, to some library or whatever. And it will run on 100 examples of my data set every brick. And then it will just show, well, it seems like you have different languages in your text, or you have different complexities. It might make sense to enrich your text with the following bricks, right? Um, because that's something that we have typically seen in, when, when we work with um, clients is that it gets really interesting to add those structured dimensions to your texts for analysis, right? So for instance, you can say something like, um, I have emails coming in from, from clients that have different intents and my machine learning model is working really well if the text is rational, but it fails when it's emotional text. Um, and that's like our intent, how we can bridge the, the gap between like, I have the idea, this could be interesting, and just having a ready-made implementation that I can nudge to whatever might make sense to me. That's that's the plan for bricks. <laughs> that's uh, that's really nice. Do you have any advice to anyone who's watching this regarding, in general, um, data science or how to get whatever advice? Any advice, life advice, data science advice, <laughs> NLP advice? Yeah, um, I have one that that I was just thinking about recently when I saw all the advancements in natural language processing and data science. And um, I think there are certain best practices one can think about. So for instance, um, I follow on Twitter this one Kaggle Grandmaster that just always tells how to best implement machine learning models for NLP data and uh, also structured data. And there already is some knowledge about what kind of models work well on what kind of Data. So for instance, for structured data, it typically helps if you already do something like a logistic regression or decision tree and for unstructured data, deep learning makes sense. Um, but some advice that I would like uh, have found useful if it was given to me earlier in my career is basically to just try things out, right? So I think that's super cool because um, 
I used to be the person that always applied neural networks to every problem I had, <laughs> anything like that didn't matter how big the data set was, how good the quality and the results were not great, but it helped me a lot to learn more about how the algorithms work, how the math under the hood works. Um, and so for people that just get started with data science, I think it's not a bad idea to just play around with things, even if they are not the best practice. <laughs> And that's really great advice. Uh, I see uh, students of our courses often ask questions like, oh, what is better? Should I use this model or that model? Just try, right? And see. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And it's fun, I think, right? So yeah, it is. Um, and what I, what I also like to do is just make a bet with myself before and seeing the, the, the results of the, the benchmarks, just thinking from what I Think about a problem. This is an unstructured problem. I have the following data set, size, and everything. What could make sense? And then just make a bet before that and see if it actually uh, works. And what, what kind of bet do you use? Like, is it money? No, just, just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't bet any money? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> do, do you want to mention anything else before we wrap up? Um, so mainly thanks again. Um, I really enjoyed this series and and um, I'm a, basically watched most of the videos myself and I think it's just really cool. Um, and I hope that this could be um, somewhat interesting for both people working on it in a daily practice just to have something to look up. And also, I mean, I also want to encourage people just what I mentioned to um, if someone has any idea or wants to implement any module, please don't be afraid at all. Um, and if you make mistakes, then that's perfect. Then we'll help uh, those kind of mindsets. So um, yeah, I would be really happy if if, if people um, have fun with this with this uh, library. <laughs> Making mistakes is a part of the process, right? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Johannes. Uh, always a pleasure having you here. And uh, looking forward to seeing more demos for you in the from you in the future. For sure. Thanks, Alexei. Goodbye. Bye bye.